With this reading, we are talking about individuals that are resetting. You have the first chakra, your root chakra, and then the crown chakra. And what I'm getting from this is that there is energy coming through. It's like your crown chakra, your higher selves, a representation of, of a, a higher point of yourself, and then your root chakra, your lowest point, are realigning. It's like it's it's like energy or spirit is taking the energy of these two opposing poles, your north your north pole and your south pole, right? And the energies are recalibrating. Hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, this is going to be your general energy reading for your day, for your moment, for your year, whenever you find this reading. Yes, so please keep in mind this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading. This doesn't absolutely have to resonate for you at this time, okay? Whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. But also keep in mind that you could be getting the message early and then the experience actually happens a little later on down the road, yeah? As always, if you are interested in more morning coffee or some more messages, check out the morning coffee playlist found in the top right of your screen and in the pin, the comment, and description down below. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything to start with today. Um, I have no massive amount of channeled messages. I have no, no agenda to touch on this morning. So we're just going to get into it. Um, but I will say that you're, please, please bear with me. I think I have to wash all of the shirts in my closet. In, like all of my shirts, all of my sweatshirts, probably all of my pants. There's something in the closet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Some of you will get that. There's something in my closet that um, is fucking with my allergies, you guys. I put another one of my shirts on, another one of my t-shirts on this morning to get ready to go. And of course, again, my face started really going. However, there's also something in the air right now. So I say all that to say I'm having allergy troubles today again. So like, please bear with me. Hold on a second. Okay. So I'm going to do my best to not be a blubbering, sniffling mess <laughs> during this reading, uh, but please bear with me. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get into it. Um, I'm really feeling, uh, like I said, I don't really have anything major to start with. So we're just going to pull cards and um, I'm really feeling the energy Oracle deck again. So we're going to use that again today. And then I have the Tarot Mucha deck here, okay, for our for our Tarot uh, clarification. And then I have other decks here. We might get more clarification if we need it. And then, of course, we will cross the Oracle Guidance Bridge when we get there. Yeah, guys, excellent. So let's just get into the, get into this and see what messages Spirit has, what Spirit wants to discuss with us today in this moment in this session. Here we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm trying. I promise. I'm trying. Okay, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, circumstances, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Okay, guys, here we go. Five shuffles. One. Happy Friday, guys. This is two. Is this, was this the first week in August? This is three. First week of August is officially done. Time flies when you're having fun. Hardly. This is four. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
I crack myself up, you guys. And this is five. All right. So, what messages do you have for the collective, please, spirit, God, source, creator? What do you want to discuss with the kids today? What messages do you have for the collective, please, spirit? Okay. 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 Let's get a little, I want to get a little bit more before we talk about this. Anything else? What else do you want to say about this? Because I kind of feel like the message is a little incomplete. Let's hit that right there. Okay. Oh, that came with it too. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, you guys. Okay. So here we go. This, um, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best with this message because it, it feels a little all over the place. It feels a little scattered. It could just be the fact that this is a big collective message for tons and tons of people. So that's why it feels so loose. So, so loosely, like, so lo it feels loosely defined, this message, okay? Um, as a channeler, what happens for me is I pull the cards and I see the cards and my intuition pulls in the message from the cards, right? Through the interpretation of the cards. And a lot of times it feels very definitive, okay? Very black and white, very plain, very like, this is exactly what it is. For the collective here in this sense, I understand what it is, but it still feels amalgamous. Like it's it's like a big amoeba, right? And it, there's, there's, there's so many different uh, possibilities and so many different ways that this could be worked out that it doesn't really have clear definition. Okay, but what's happening for the collective is there is, I want to say this is, this, ha this has to do with the reset that we're all experiencing in this little corner of the collective or, you know, a on a big grander scale, okay? Um, you have a ton of cards here, but my focus right now is on the seventh chakra and the first chakra. These two cards, Archangel Uriel and then Archangel Michael. So this represents your root chakra and your crown chakra. And it literally is like, it's like you're the very top and the very bottom of, <laughs> of your chakra system, right? So, but the reason why I was laughing like that was because I was cupping the bottom, like it, because you know, your, your root chakra is like right at your butt and it's just like, <laughs> cut the booty. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but actually... Actually, that's kind of what the divine is doing for us right now. They've got us cupped down here at our root chakra, but then also cupped up here at our crown chakra. And things are, things are changing, okay? With this, you have, okay, so you have the root chakra and you have the crown chakra. You have the angel of strength, which is also, in my opinion, which is the strength card, is a uh, uh, is similar to the strength card in the major arcana okay then you have action which this could be seen as the chariot okay um and then you have the world which can be seen as the world all right um and then you have adjacent possibilities and thinking man okay this is where the bulk of the reading is coming in for you right now this is where the bulk of the information this is what i wanted to talk about the most at the bottom of the deck you do have door to personal happiness and healing or dirt of personal healing and happiness. And then right underneath that, you have all tied up, which to me is the eight of swords energy. And then you have the angel of balance, which to me is temperance. And then you have the fourth chakra, Archangel Raphael. And then you have rest and rejuvenation, which is the fourth, which to me is the four of swords. And then you have walking away, which could be the eight of cups. Okay. I mean, I literally, y'all know me. If, you, if you've been following me now, you know I could read from the bottom of the deck until the cows come home, right? Um, but I'm not going to do that. So what we have here is there's a, there's a big shift that's, cha that's happening in the collective, for us in this collective. I'm not trying to say that this is happening worldwide because it's not happening worldwide. 
Okay, wait, no, stop right there. It is happening worldwide, but it's not happening. This isn't a big collective shift or a big collective change for and like the whole world and mass. There are a lot of people that are choosing to stay with the status quo, that are choosing to stay with the world or society or the societal structure as it currently is. And I want to make it very clear. I mean, I, I mean, no judgment with that. Neither does spirit. Okay. It's, it's in this case, what I just heard is it's black and white. It's pretty black and white here. Either you're going this way or you're going that way. And either way, there's no judgment involved. You guys, you need to understand what we really need to understand is if we're going to understand unconditional love here, kids, we need to be understanding of, we need to be understanding as, as understanding as we possibly can. Oh, whoa, big download right there. Um, we need to be as understanding to every individual as we personally possibly can, okay, and compassionate for everyone and their path, for everyone and their journey, no matter how weird, strange, divergent, dark, evil, good, angelic, demonic, whatever you may perceive it as to be, everybody's path is right for them or everybody's path the path that they walk is what that person that individual is needing to experience for their individual soul uh, 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 uh soul expression and soul progress okay let's make that very very clear there are some in there are quite a few individuals actually in the collective on the in the human collective on the planet right now that are choosing to stay with the status quo and that's perfectly fine no judgment, no shade, no hate, no malice. There are also many of us that are choosing to shift into a 5D paradigm, or at least are choosing to walk the ascension ladder, and if not skip straight from the third to the fifth dimension, skip straight, go from the third to the fourth dimension, okay? And you do, I, yo, y'all, I found a really awesome channel last night. And I don't remember his name, unfortunately. It's either Sal or Sam the Illusionist or something. And he obviously works with the Law of One, or he has read the Law of One, or he's tuned into some of the theories of the Law of One. But you, um, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place right now. There's so much I want to tell you. But um, so humanity is in an, in an ascension process right now, okay? Whether you want to believe it or not, I don't, if if you're here watching my channel or any other channel like this, you're on that ascension process. Okay, let's just make that clear. Uh, but um, as we go through this ascension process, you guys have heard me talk about the path of of um, service to others versus the path of service to self, right? Okay, um, and that is a that is a topic or that is an understanding that I got from reading the Law of One. It makes perfect sense to me. Now, I didn't realize there is a third path, but wait, let's talk about this for a second. Um, if you're on the path of service to self, then you're most likely staying in this third dimensional reality, in this third dimensional timeline, in this divergent timeline, in this timeline in which we have people moving towards transhumanism and integrating themselves with computers and microchips and, and, and basically creating a synthetic reality in which um, instead of being connected to source and having all of these extrasensory powers and extrasensory perception and all these spiritual powers that humans naturally have, instead of awakening to those powers naturally organically within us, we have a part of society that is going in the synthetic route. So a lot of, this is a lot of what Gigi Young has been talking about that I've been sharing here for the collective. Um, this is, a, this has a, uh, but, um, there's that side of the path and that more that that direction in the path is more of I see it as a more of a path of service to self right that's going to keep you in a lower vibe situation I mean you can walk up the ascension ladder walking taking the path of service to self but it is a very difficult path to walk I mean both any of them are fairly difficult but that one 
You have to be so self-centered, so self, so self-centered, okay, in order to really excel in that path. And and as I stated before, you can only get so far up the dimensional ladder, all right? Because that, because you're missing when you take when you walk the path of service to self, which looks like manipulation, domination, might is right, um, uh, dictatorships, oligarchies. That kind of energy, right? That's what path of service to self looks like, okay? Because the path of service to self manipulates other individuals to aligning with your point of view and everything that those individuals do that are under the uh, dictator's control, everything they do goes to serve that dictator, okay? That is an extremely manipulative path. And actually, it's a path that generates a shit ton of negative karma because of how you have to manipulate and 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 and, and uh, go against other people's sense of free will. That generates negative karma that eventually you're gonna have to answer for. But also, if you're walking the path of service to self, you are missing out. You are literally skipping the lesson of love, okay? Because on the path of service to self, there's also the understanding of might is right, right? So the stronger you are, the better. The more susceptible you are to manipulation, well, then you deserved it. There's no level of compassion, of understanding the path of service to self, and especially those that believe in the might is right energy, think that completely disregard the lesson of love because they feel like it's a waste of time and a waste of energy to boil it down, to simplify it. However, if you're on the path of service to self, then you, no, I'm sorry, path of service to others, right? Then you are walking in the path of, uh, you're walking on a path that's going to lead you to the lesson of love. And that's where you get into the fourth dimension. And so, this is what, so, 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 okay, we have that understanding, right? I have come to the understanding that there is also a third path. Well, and, and the way it was described to me, or the way it was described was there are two paths, right? What the one, there are two ways to go. One is the traditional. You have the path of service to others or the path of service to self. And then you have a different route. That is the path of service to the creator. And... I got that understanding from this, from this channel. It's either Sam or Sal, the creator, or I'm sorry, the illusionist, not the creator, the illusionist. And he channels, he channels the Octurians, he channels the Pleiadians, he channels, he channeled, the one, the, the video that I watched yesterday was a channeling of Archangel Michael. And um, it, it spoke about this second path, which is the path of service to the creator. And that's where you are literally allowing the creator's creative energies, God source creator, whatever you want to call it, to flow through you. And that is one of the most difficult paths you can walk. It's not easy because you're often coming up against societal pressure. You're often doing exactly the, the opposite of what society would have you do or religion would have you do this, that, and the third because it's, because it's so, there's so much more. It's so much more than that, okay? And that's really just a real basic and probably awful description <laughs> of the energy. I hope you guys are, make, are following this is making sense to you, but when you walk the path of service to the creator where you are literally making your so so in a religious sense i guess this would be being of service to god right walking that traditional religious service being a, a, a servant of god but not in a religious sense in a spiritual sense and when you take it out of the religion and you put it in the realm of spirit then that can be expressed in any way it's as it's as different the expression of it is as different and as diverse as there are individuals because literally from my understanding of it and it's pretty basic at this point but what from my understanding of it is you are literally just allowing the creative energies of source of god source creator to flow through you okay 
which is going to create all kinds of upheaval. If, like those of you that really get it, you would you, you can imagine if you were to just allow sources energy to flow through you to create all kinds of situations. Imagine the madness that could ensue because there's so much that source, that God source creator, that the universe is trying to get us as humans to wake up to. So imagine the upheavals. Think about like, look at what Jesus went through, right? He walked the path of service to creator, service to source. And he was ended up, he ended up being murdered by the government because he was a blasphemer. That shit is difficult, right? And I'm not saying any of us that are choosing to do that, we're, uh, we're about to be, we're facing being murdered, but hey, you never know, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so where was I going with all that? Well, that was a little bit of a tangent, but you got a little bit of information there. Um, I hope that made sense. But with this reading, with this reading, we are talking about individuals that are walking one of that are that are that are resetting. Okay, you have the first chakra, your root chakra, and then the crown chakra. And what I'm getting from this is that there is energy coming through. It's like your crown chakra, your higher selves, your representation of, of a, a higher point of yourself, and then your root chakra, your lowest point, are realigning. It's like it's it's like energy or spirit is taking the energy of these two opposing poles, your north your north pole and your south pole, right? And the energies are recalibrating. Okay, you have. Uh, let me just go to this thinking man and adjacent possibilities. Okay, so this is an energy of the masculine within you thinking about. Okay, what? It's like it's like you're going through this reset with the universe. And you're standing there looking at it, critically thinking, okay, what is next? What, what opportunity do I want to take? What doorway do I want to go through? Where, what direction do I want to move in now? And this is all coming from the recent energetic closures that you've been going through. You may not realize it, but we have all been closing out some major overarching cycles, left, right, and center. It's like it's been... Mar a marathon of just one closure, one closure, this closure, that closure, this closure, that closure. And I mean, it's just like, it's, it's a whirlwind. It's got a lot of us feeling like, okay, what the fuck is going on? Like, what's next, right? But because you're going through this reset, you're here in this energy thinking, okay, what is it that I really want to be doing next? What is it that I really need to be doing next? What's coming next for me? Or with this new alignment that I'm receiving, that I'm, I'm getting into, where do I want to go from here? What is the best thing for me to do? And many of you, just like myself, I find myself doing this today, but many of you are literally sitting back and asking God, source creator, and asking your higher self. You're literally looking for guidance from your higher self instead of just trying to do this from a three-dimensional egoic point of view. Okay. The last few cards that you have here is the world, action, and the angel of strength. This feels like an overall energy. Okay, so you have, this is the energy that is kind of hovering over you right now. Okay, this is your overall energy. This is the energy that's describing your energetic environment that is surrounding you right now, that is influencing change. You want to take action. And the world is representing the closure. I want to say in some cases, for many of us, the extreme closure that we're going through right now, closing out so many different cycles, hundreds of different, like lifetimes worth of cycles, okay? Okay. For many of us, you may not see it on the surface. You may not recognize it on the surface, but it's happening. There's a big, massive cleansing and healing that's happening for the collective. But we've been going through this for months, right? Angel of strength is also representing the strength card or the strength energy, right? And so it definitely feels like with this realignment here, your ego is being shifted, is being integrated more fully into the presence of you at this point. 
so that your ego is no longer in its own lane, but it's getting into alignment with all of your being, right? And then you have action, but this is not like you're taking action now. You're preparing for action. Thus, we have the thinking man and adjacent possibilities. With this alignment that we're going through, you guys, I really feel like we are being, we are, our minds, our perceptions are being opened to how things actually can be very, very different than how it has been for us up until now. We're starting to understand cognitively, consciously understand that it does not have to be just the way that it has been presented to us by the establishment. We can do things differently. Now, I don't see us taking any action yet, okay? Because I feel like in the collective, we're just, like this information, this understanding is just starting to breach our conscious minds. Like it's, it's start, we're starting to get to a point where we understand it enough to even allow it into our consciousness. Whereas before, we may have blocked it out because of the social conditioning, right? But now, as things are changing so much, and quite frankly, what I'm feeling for the collective now is, I mean, basically the establishment energies or like the whatever, the status quo is literally digging its own grave right now. There really isn't much we need to do other than just sit back and observe, you guys. Okay, I mean, I. I mean, look at what's happening. The state of our world is not sustainable. I mean, it hasn't been for the longest time, but now we're reaching the fever pitch, right? That was, that was an interesting little tidbit. That flash just hit me. It's like, and we really don't even need to do much. We just gotta sit back and watch the world crumble or watch the structure that we've been standing upon that we've been con continuously building upon, even though the, stable, the, the, the structure was not stable, right? We just have to sit here and watch it crumble. But as we're watching it crumble, you guys, we are making decisions for ourselves as individuals and then coming to the collective with like, okay, so what do we do about this? Well, I got this idea. I got this idea. I got this idea. And then we're all talking about it. We're all trying to figure out how to do this together in a way, in a sense, or more together. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck, like I said, I just want to remind us before we move forward, door to personal healing and happiness. Because societally, for many of us here, for those of us that are really resonating on the channel here, in this part of the collective or outside in a greater part of the collective too. But I really only feel like I want to speak for this part of the collective, right? Our little corner of the collective. Not that we're any different, but I want to speak to and for the people that are here with us now. Yes. Um, this door to personal healing and happiness energy. It's like, as we're going through this shift, as we're going through this reset and as we're opening our minds, to adjacent possibilities here, this door of personal healing and happiness begins to open because we're opening our minds and our, our consciousnesses to different ways of doing things. How it doesn't have to be one size fit all, fits all, you know what I mean? That, like, that, that, kind, of, that kind of energy, okay? Cool. Okay, guys. Let's move forward. I want to get clarifying. And really the only things I want to clarify here are um, the first chakra and the seventh chakra. So your root and your crown chakra. And then the thinking man and a chastened possibilities. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I really, I really want to make sure I point out this thinking man energy is really just speaking to the masculine energy within you. Okay. The action oriented energy within you versus the receptive uh, energy of the feminine, right? Excellent. All right, let's give this five shuffles. One. This is two. Three. 
This is three. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty guys, so let's start with the first chakra, Archangel Michael and the seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel, yeah? And this is the energy that to me is speaking to this great physical reset within yourself, right? So, God source creator, spirits, ancestors, way showers, and guides, what clarity can you bring for us in terms of the first chakra and the seventh chakra? What what would you like to say? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, at overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Wheel of Fortune. And then we have the Three of Cups, the Six of Cups, and the Knight of Cups. So what this is saying to me, you guys, is that we're kind of going down memory lane a little bit with the Six of Cups. And... Uh, we have this collective energy of the Three of Cups, kind of like the hive mind energy. It feels a little immature. It feels a little bit adolescent, this Three of Cups energy, this energy right here. Because I feel like we are standing in the Knight of Cups here, which is representing a more mature, higher point of view, heart chakra activated energy. Whereas, or versus, the Three of Cups is just, is representing, is feeling like the hive mind. Is feeling like the energies of just go along with what everyone else says because it's better that way. You don't stand out, you don't, you, you don't, you don't look like a fool, you don't look like, you're not questioning anything or anyone, just go with the flow, just do what they tell you. Three of Cups. But that comes from a place of fear. Fear of rejection fear of ostracization, fear of death, right? Because there are a lot of, of, of controlling entities that use that hive mind mentality to whip people into shape, that use that fear-mongering energy to get people in line, that would rather people not think for themselves and instead just do what the collective is doing or the hive mind or the hive is doing, the three of cups, in order to ensure their safety. But in doing that, you're literally handing your, your power over to those in power instead of remaining or retaining your personal power and your personal right to choose and your personal right to think for yourself. And that is a huge part of our collective experience right now. Okay, I mean, I've been talking about this. This message has been coming out, but, the, but many of us or we're all, we are all dealing with right now the reality of standing up, choosing for yourself, thinking for yourself, critically thinking for yourself, or just going along with those who are going along with what those who are in power have to say about it. Right? The experts. And not to say that people don't aren't experts, not to say that people aren't don't have you know, doctorates and degrees in, in biology and chemistry. And like, not, that's not to say that at all, but where it comes down to or what it comes down to is thinking for yourself, is asking the hard questions. Well, what's your alignment? Who are you really working for? Where, where is this information coming from? Is this a credible source? And is there any sort of information to the contrary? If there is information to the contrary, what is their alignment? Who are they working for? What's their agenda? What's your agenda? See, all of those things. But those are questions that the Three of Cups would, would discourage you from answering. Oh, don't, don't, don't ask too many questions. Don't be too smart. You're too smart for your own good. 
Just follow along. Just go with what they're telling you. Just assimilate. That's the past. Six of Cups. The Knight of Cups is representing your heart coming online and you gaining that connection to Source and beginning to think for yourself. And that's where the Wheel of Fortune comes in. And that's where the Emperor comes in. And that's where the Six of Pentacles comes in. And that's where Temperance comes in. And that's where Judgment comes in. And that's where Death comes in. And that's where Ten of Cups comes in. And then we've got the Chariot. Okay. This is all clarifying this reset that we're going through. Which is translating into a new form of critical thinking. Or not even a new form, a new realm of critical thinking that we're opening ourselves to. Right? Okay. Okay. Excellent. Let's move forward here. You know, it is really sad. It is really sad that in society, it's coming to a point where we can't just automatically trust those who are in power or trust those who have the expertise. It's really sad that we have to sit back and be discerning and say, okay, yeah, you have this, that, and that, this, you have this and that degree. You have this and that doctorate. You have this and that masters in X, Y, and Z. But that doesn't mean I can trust you. It is so important for us to question the agendas of those who are in power, of those who are giving us information, of those who are releasing or providing us with any sort of information. Because, because not, we're not being given everything. We're not being given the chance to, creep, to think critically for ourselves. The, <laughs> the decision is being made for us. We're not being given all of the information, all of the studies. And this just doesn't, this, I mean, this isn't anything new. This is not anything new to this day and age, you guys. Okay. So sure, we could be talking about the pandemic. We could be talking about vaccination and all that. We could be. But let's go back to the 1980s. When companies like Texaco and Exxon were doing climate change research. And they came up with all kinds of reasons why we should not be using fossil fuels. Why we should be make we should have been making the transition from using fossil fuels to renewable energy decades ago. And they and all of their research that talked about their involvement in the acceleration of climate change. And what did they do? They suppressed that energy, that, that, that energy, yeah. They suppressed that knowledge, that research. And instead funded a disinformation campaign to keep them in power. And now look at what's happening to the planet. Especially with all the climate change deniers. Now look at what's happening to the planet. Let, now look at the Pacific Northwest of the United States and the massively unnatural heat wave That's just one example. It's sad. It is very, very sad that we have all of this expertise, all of this potential, all of this knowledge at right at our fingertips, tips. But we can't necessarily trust the people that bring it to us because we have to question their motives. That's sad. But... It is what it is, isn't it? Let's move forward. We have the thinking man and adjacent possibilities. So let's look at this for the collective. What do you want to say to the collective about this, please, Spirit? Adjacent possibilities, the thinking man. That's good. Okay. More. Okay, we have the Nine of Cups here at the bottom of the deck. Okay. 
we have the Four of Wands, the Four of Cups, the Seven of Swords, and the Eight of Pentacles. So the first thing that I thought, that I felt when I saw, because the Four of Wands was the first card to catch my attention when it came out. This feels like you, you really been, have been working on your sovereignty. You've really been working on your sense of critical thinking, on your sense of personal opinion, personal understanding, four of wands. It just feels like you come to a place where you're solid within yourself so that you can think for yourself and you can be open to the adjacent possibilities, okay? But it's also because of this solid nature that you come to within yourself that you are no longer willing to be engaged with anything that is deceptive. Four of Cups, Seven of Swords. And you are working on yourself and your personal happiness. Nine of Cups, Eight of Pentacles. It's, it's becoming very clear. Five of Wands. It's becoming very clear, or it has become very clear, that what it is you've been working towards from a societal point of view is not bringing you any sort of happiness or contentment. It's actually quite deceptive, isn't it? Seven of Swords. Being told that you'll, well, if you, if you go after this certain career arc, you're going to be happy you're going to and you're going to be happy because you're going to be make a lot of money and you'll have a lot of fame and fortune and and this that and the third and all that shit and then you get there and you're like what the fuck is this this doesn't make me happy i've spent my whole life up until now 30 to 40 years pursuing something that i ended up not being able to stand and the only reason i keep it is so that i can have the money the status but it doesn't make me happy four cups seven of swords and yeah it makes you feel like you're you're being stolen from your life has is being taken from you all for what to serve whom definitely not yourself but see that's what you're coming to an understanding of or you've come to an understanding of with the four of wands that's your solid energetic passionate spiritual foundation right there and thus, it's become very apparent, five of wands, that what it is that you've been working towards is not providing you with the, at least the basic level of contentment that you want, nine of cups. And thus, you change your alignment, queen of wands. And thus, with this, the thinking man and also this adjacent possibility energy, you open yourself up to the possibility of so much more. And then in comes the Empress and says, yes, you can have that. Yes, you are abundant. And then you look back on the past and recognize five of swords, the defeating energy of the past. Whereas now you're standing in the realm of anything is possible. The Empress, you can have anything you want course keep in mind in this third dimension or this consciousness or in this reality we are co-creating with the universe right so you got to work in tandem with the universe but abundance and then you look back and you see the destructive energy of the past five of swords and you recognize that you learned that lesson seven of pentacles you're moving forward from that queen of cups because you understand how it is you feel and that's providing you with a brand new opportunity to ace of pentacles to the queen of pentacles to the ace of swords to strength to the knight of pentacles keep going keep going Nine of Cups was at the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and let's close out this reading. And I want to close out again with the Light Worker Oracle. Yes? Excellent. All right. Here we go, kids. Closing Oracle Guidance. 
four shuffles. One, two, three, and four. All right, guys, closing Oracle guidance, please. Damn, same card as yesterday, you guys. <laughs> card number 22, Initiation by Fire. Wow. Same card as yesterday. <laughs> okay. Um, instead of reading the quick blurb at the top, I'm going to go in a little deeper since we read this card yesterday. So if you want to, go check yesterday's reading, which is titled um, Lost in the Haze. Uh, and the image says, if you're lost, or the, 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 the thumbnail says, if you're feeling lost in the haze, then this message is for you. Check that out. It's also in the morning coffee playlist. But here you go. Since this card came out, again, we're going to go a bit deeper. You have the spirit of the phoenix in you. You are able to rise again and again, even if, at times, all seems lost. You are guided to remember this, as you are now being spiritually cleansed through initiation by fire. During such times, you will feel that you are being asked to let go of relationships, situations, sometimes even jobs, attitudes, and belief systems that you have relied upon until now. You might have unintentionally placed more faith in that person, place, belief system, or identity than you placed in the divine. You might have held on to them rather than allowing the divine to guide you. This can happen easily on the earth plane. Sometimes these attachments become confining rather than supportive. In such cases, you will need to be free, you will need to free yourself to continue your life journey. During the initiation by fire, all such attachments are burned away. A new life is a blessing, but that doesn't mean it is easily won. Sometimes the process can be challenging to the mind, even whilst the heart trusts in what is taking place. Whatever has been your stronghold in life, such as a family, a marriage, job security, a talent, or something that you have used to define your sense of self, you will be where that fire, well, will be. This is where the fire will burn brightest. Those areas will be transformed, letting go and allowing that to happen to the very parts of your life that you are most protective of can require deep faith. You have to remember that love is real so that you can hold on to your courage whilst you go through the and allow the divine to have its way. Remember that the power of fire is destructive only in part it also stimulates rapid new growth. Healing will arise in whatever area is being transformed. It is not only an ending, but also a beginning. This experience of initiation by fire is the divine making its presence felt in your life. It will be one of the most freeing and empowering experiences you'll have whilst in the physical body. It may ask you to confront your fears and insecurities as you learn to trust the divine unconditionally. Know that the universe will always provide for you and always in the way that is best for you, even if you don't understand why it needs to happen the way it does at the time. Keep your eye on the inner transformations that are occurring rather than fearing the outer changes. The universe loves you and holds you in high regard. Remember this and trust. Initiation is an act and it is an advanced spiritual lesson. You are being honored by what is happening in your life by now. Or right now, oh, I'm sorry. You are being honored by what is happening in your life now. You are strong enough to get through it and thrive into new life like a radiant phoenix triumphantly emerging from the sacred fire. I fucking love it, you guys. So there you have it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so freaking much. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care.
Bye. <laughs>